And welcome everyone. After that thrilling mage game, we are here getting set for the upcoming second finals of this evening. Today, we will go ahead uh, for the second match, take a look at the challengers uh, division, I believe, with Sasajiro and Pie Monster coming out here. My name is Orbital. Of course, you know who I am, the one that really doesn't know what's going on, but is happy nonetheless. And Mick, the one with all the information and knows exactly what's going on. Mick, how you doing? I'm doing great, man. I'm super excited to finally finish things out today, see what these players got to bring to the table, and just give ourselves one heck of a finale, especially what we saw in that last game. Oh, man. I mean, what you can't really beat somehow getting upwards of five-plus primes in your no. hand and actually having to say, I have to throw three out. So feels kind of bad. Uh, but, of course, let's go ahead. And, and I wanted to also say... Cool little beans is you are going to be casting both this finals and the last one of the evening. So, yeah, taking your words to heart, you will be fully running it out uh, along with Nelhead, uh, I believe, for the champions. Yep. That would be correct. And, you know, I'm super <laughs> excited for that just to kind of have the opportunity to sit there and finish it out, not for one series or one division, excuse me, but mm -hmm. two as well. It's such an honor. And I'm super excited to see exactly how these games all overall can play out, how all these players adapted seen so many guys over the course of the season, so many guys and girls, and just how well they've done so far and up to this point. I'm super excited to see what exactly they can bring to the table. Hopefully, see what kind of curveballs they can bring to the table because I feel like they're a little bit so adjusted to this meta now in the competitive series rather than just being on the ladder that hopefully we can finally see something today and allow themselves to really spotlight themselves with a little bit of a fireworks display out there at the end. Yeah, that's what we're hoping. Uh, but however, we have got the deck list for the upcoming match. So again, Sasajiro coming in at number five and Pie Monster coming in at number seven. In terms of uh, ranking right coming in, these two have got to be considered dark horses considering, again, no first seeds, no second seeds, no third. None of the top dogs made it into this finals bracket. I mean, even though they are running pretty standard decks, I mean, how do you feel this kind of factor in? Do you think they just played it a little bit better or, or maybe luck was on their side? I mean, how how in the world are we having a number five and number seven, which uh, almost should be like the quarterfinals plan, right? Now in the yeah. finals here. Like, how, how do you feel about that? I mean, there's a little aspect of everything that you mentioned. I mean, oh, luck is obviously, it's a card game, man. It's always going to be a factor. <laughs> um, then you also got just board control overall, just the way the game plays out, deciding what decks to ban. That's a huge influence in looking at how your two decks can like combine and factor in with everything and just see how these games play out, what exactly each player is capable of and exactly getting that board control or whether or not if your deck is purely based on controlling, you're just trying not to play it out and just buy enough time, such as Warlock. So, I mean, I see that today that we are going to be seeing some of those kind of control archetypes with Warrior and Paladin being out of the pool today. Yep. And so just running down the list, Sasajiro is running a token Druid, Rush Warrior, Face Hunter, and Secret Paladin. Pie Monster on the other side will have the Rush Warrior, Secret Paladin, no Minion Mage, a little bit interesting, and the Control Warlock. Now the Rush Warrior for Sasajiro was banned away just now, and the, uh, for Pie Monster, the Secret Paladin. So taking away that possible mirror paladin matchup which uh, was literally the only two decks that were complete mirrors uh the rush warriors were a little bit rough a uh, little bit all over the place so uh you know that's its own thing that's its own meta in its own right yeah uh but what do you think of these bands right rush warrior and secret paladin both of them top tier decks i think uh third or fourth in terms of win percentages how do you feeling about that yeah, I gotta say, the Secret Paladin, that's a great idea. I love that band personally. Um, when considering, though, the whole um, Rush Warrior, I haven't exactly seen enough actual results out of it. I've seen a lot of value. I've seen a lot of great things. You know, but it's almost like, you know, you see a great deal in the grocery store. You see a three for one on your favorite cereal. You go to check out. You don't have enough money on your card to buy it. it it's just, it, it seems like a great deal right there up front. But when it just can't execute, when you can't get to the finish line with it, it it's just so disappointing. And I feel like getting that out of the way is actually going to play kind of into, into the whole favor here. Sausage Zero, kind of getting that out of the way. Uh, it's just, it's interesting. And none the least, I'm just excited mostly to see that No Minion Mage and see what exactly can be pulled out of that. Because I kind of knew it wasn't going to be banned. It's a very variable based deck and it relies on a lot of RNG, not just in what you draw, but what is generated from those draws. And that alone is what I'm excited to see exactly what can be brought to the table. Because Deck of Lunacy and Potion of Illusion is looking to be like a hot pick for uh, Solarium Primes here today. So maybe we could get the same luck here on our stream. Yeah, unfortunately, I don't think uh, I, I I I will say I hope 
right? But in a no minion deck, of course, you don't really have that uh, easy access to Prime. You know, that easy swap in with the minion. You're, you're guessing, right? And that's the whole hope. We are into the first game, though. So it does look like we will see the Hunter versus Paladin to kick things off. Sausage Euro uh, being able to pull a couple ones with the Wolper Tingers and a Mancrake. So not, not a terrible start with some low costs to round things out. Yeah, I'm going to say with that whole main group, I mean, that's a great draw right off the bat. Having two of those Wolpertingers, I mean, maybe I would usually want to trade one of those out. Obviously, you do have a lot of great tempo there in the beginning. Wolpertinger, unless you're going to flood the board, get all four of those down with that coin initially, you're not going to have a lot of super hard initiative there in the front. Great play overall. The main crit being a 3-4 three, for 3 mana, you're really waiting for those shuffles because there's not an immediate effect. But we're going to see those four Wolf Tingers come out, which I got to say is the best result all in all when you really look at what's capable. Yeah, well, the Crab Rider just right to answer, which, uh, you know, if could he uh, if he could attack four times, we'll be able to clear the board and uh, simply hunt those uh, rabbit things for pure food. Mm -hmm. Activating that secret early, that is going to be the Noble Sacrifice uh, being used to draw up a little bit of a 2-1, but again, taken out very, very quickly. And the Dorval Infestation taken very quickly uh, just to try and keep a little bit more than just a 1-1 one -one on the board. Again, the critters of this, uh, of this hunter is always kind of rough to deal with in the early stages. Yeah, and especially seeing have that second crab rider. Obviously, that's going to be a great resource there to go ahead and clear out the board a little bit. Go ahead and trading out for those two ones. Make sure there's not as so much establishment on the board. With that main card coming up next turn, we obviously have to factor in the draws that are coming up here, and we see it under Rhino coming up right now. But a main crit, that's going to be a great draw right there, getting a 3-4 on the board, getting a little bit more tankier stats. Not a single minion that's been played so far has had a more than, you know, one base help, beside, you know, excluding those buffs. So going forward, I mean, Sasajira just needs more stats overall to actually get a curve going here, because with these two one draws, just one Thundering Rhino I don't think is going to cut it. Yep. And now the question is, is what are you going to discover? You have the commencement, Noble Sacrifice, and Wave of Apathy. Again, 7-1-1, one, and one, it's just like, you really can't go for commencement. Uh, you're, you're taking a look at the Noble Sacrifice, which uh, is always a nice secret to hang on to. But at the same time, Wave of Apathy uh, can be useful in the case that Sausage is able to start stacking up some of these boards. Uh, and no. so is going to go ahead, take that little safety act, especially when you know Mankirk's wife is in play, right? That that 310 coming out, it's just like, that's pain. So yeah. gonna go ahead, take the wound prey, deal one damage, and that poison can be very, very difficult. So gonna go ahead, take away the scorpion, and make sure Mancrick is able to stay alive for that much longer and starting to uh, slowly try and chip away at this paladin's health. Yeah, and I'm actually surprised how well everything's kind of getting managed on the board here. Pie Monster, he, this is where the game's really going to step up. And for Sausage Era to actually manage to find some kind of resources right up there off the bat, manage what he can to allow himself to get an impressive nine damage overall. I mean, that Tambourine Rhino, I mean, that alone is going to do a lot of damage to one of these smaller minions that they do manage to come out on the board, especially if you have that Tampering Rhino. You go face with it, try and get all seven. You're killing a two, and on top of that, there's a no Noble Sacrifice that comes down from that Sword of the Fallen. So there's so much potential that's within this. It really just comes down to how well and how carefully Pie Monster wants to play these next couple turns, seeing that he only, his Sausage only has two cards in hand. Ooh, and getting the Galloping Savior. Uh, as a nice little setup. Of course, it's only a one cost secret, but uh, that's still going to be helpful, especially with how quickly these pumps have been for Sausageiro, right? Three cards in a single turn is nothing for him if he has it prepped properly. Of course, right now, he doesn't really have that opportunity sitting with a one and five, so you're like, eh, not going to see that. But the secret being played is always a, uh, a nice little buffer zone, because again, sitting with some of the higher costs. Uh, Hammer of the Naru, of course, one of the big ones that we're taking a look. Piercing shots is immediately uh, going to be held on to. So, yep, goes ahead for the trampling Rhino with that rush. Uh, so, 5-5 five, five, and 3-4. Nice little setup, and Pie Monster needs to be a little bit careful, probably allocate some of his resources properly if he wants to kind of brute force his way through the upcoming rounds. Yeah, I gotta say, I love how last turn I was kind of questioning on why Pie Monster didn't exactly, you know, hero power there. But with the piercing shot, with the tampering, uh, trampling Rhino, there's a lot of damage right there to not only execute that 1-1, one, one, but also get damage on top of it. And I think Pie Monster was very good to read that and say that this is probably going to be resources in his deck. He's probably going to have this in his hand because the curve hasn't reached. The mana hasn't gotten there yet. So I need to go ahead and make sure that with this next turn coming up, I don't need to put that down for him. I don't need to allow him to get that free damage. 
coach, especially with it having, you know, rush but not having charge, utilize that. And I think having that wave of apathy, having something to play with, that piercing shot is going to be pretty threatening, but having a divine protector in hand and the hand of a doll to protect whatever, as we do see that possessed villager go down with it to get that card draw, this is going to be a great play looking at how exactly Pine Monster is going to be playing safe, quote unquote, going forward. Yeah, and, and I, I I always say it feels bad that you have to use Wave of Epathy on two minions, right? Like, yeah. you, you want to maybe get three or four, and now you can actually see the drop down, so it's still about four damage total. But with the secret and play with the Oh My Ya, we'll see what gets cast instead. And since that was a piercing shot, it is mm -hmm. drawn to a power of infusion. Oh, uh, no. I, I actually think that's a little bit worse. So a 4-9 yeah. being set up. Uh, Sausage Hero's like, thank you very much. I'll take my leave. And Pine Monster's just scratching his head like, one. That has got to fall in my favor at some point. Yeah, especially when you have that Barakan deck that's going to draw that one, two, and three cost spell. If you, if by any means Sausageiro pulls it out, there's going to be a lot to play with to give him something to work with. With that now four or nine on the board, so I mean, I'm thinking the Villager would be very tempting to go ahead and trade this five two, not allow that damage to go into that six six with Taunt because of how crucial that's going to be. And maybe just possibly look at hero powering, protecting your minions a little bit, because that 4-9, you got to find a way to clear that out a little bit, or just do what you can with it. And I think this 9-6 now being on the board, using that conviction at this turn, that's going to be a pretty good advocate for that. Yeah, and uh, I, I will say Pie Monster actually weathered the storm very well, opted to take the damage instead uh, to save the villager, right? So now he has the 6-3. Uh, 9 is gone, so that took out most of the damage. Now the question is, can he sustain, right? Sitting on 9 health, you always have to be worried about Sausage Hero being able to chip away at you uh, at a pretty consistent pace, at least 2 damage each time, considering how few cards Sausage Hero has in. So it's pretty much a race against time to try and gather some of those cards to maybe up your health or clear the board that much quicker. 1-1's one not really going to be worried too much, uh, but we will see, of course, the Ogre Mancer looks like it's going to be laid down and is able to draw up, uh, potentially, uh, a couple skeletons. But again, Sasajiro doesn't really have any spells in hand, so that's just kind of a, a moot point. Yeah, and I gotta say, at this stage of the game, I'm kind of on the same page as you with Pie Monster just having to really find a way to survive. I mean, it's a really tough situation to be in when you're already down to nine health, you have to look it away. and. Honestly, as as tempting as it is to go straight face with the six damage, I'm looking at Porta Control for the likes of Pie Monster. This man needs mm -hmm. to go ahead. Even though you're going to have that guaranteed two damage from Sausage Hero every single turn, you need to find that board control at this stage in the game. Utilize your minions, which are now there, to kind of, you, you, you bought yourself too much slack there in the front end. And now that you're here in the back, it's almost a means of procrastination. And at this stage mm -hmm. in the game, you can't let this happen. So... Really, if he pulls a trampling rhino and gets a lethal on you, that's it. You kind of set yourself up for that because now you're guaranteed double damage every single turn. And with a four coming out right here, leaving you at five health, I mean, that's and yeah, yeah that's just insult to injury. Oh, I mean, no, <laughs> that's just really what just closes it out, I believe. Uh, that's 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 gonna hurt. Uh, that is uh, gonna go ahead, leave two tracking is down. So we'll see what gets pulled. Discovering, oh, piercing shot. He doesn't even. <laughs> Gonna go it. ahead, sack it in. That's high monster taken. A loss right there. Sausage Uh ah. With, I, I would say with the end of his resources, I will admit that he was kind of on yeah. his ropes. Uh, just well played by Sausage Hero. And unfortunate card draws, right? You ran out of time, ran out of health. And so high monster, unfortunately, falters 1-0 to start things off. Yeah, and I gotta say, that's super unfortunate right there for Pie Monster. I mean, if it wasn't for that man crit to sit there and get the extra three yeah. damage guaranteed to face, I mean, that alone, that was survivable looking at what was available. The piercing shot was the only real resource that was allocated to him. The only real thing on the board that could have actually done some damage on that turn, especially having those two twos there. I mean, piercing shot was the optimal move no matter what for Sausage Hero. That would have been played, that would have opened up another two two, that would have covered for those both of those one ones to trade into and just the way things played out there and that's just i mean usually i get that at the bottom of my deck i'm drawing my whole day <laughs> yeah. before i get that just knowing my luck but i mean for that to go halfway through it it, it makes it worth the play over there at um turn three so i gotta say for sausage right there that was a great play to go ahead and keep that in hand and make sure to get those resources later
Yep, well now he's running that Rush Warrior, so should be able to pull the cards that he wants, all those rushes, all that cleanup against the Warlock of all things. Now we did see previously, uh, just I think in the Emergence Division, a Warlock deck attempting to use some of those uh, the fragments and everything of that sort. Mm -hmm. Didn't really work out as well as he wanted, so hopefully Pie Monster will have a little bit better luck here. Such as you're going ahead, tossing around and being able to draw one, three, and three ones. Uh, if my language decides to actually work, my brain wants to work on Pi Monster's side. Going to open up with the Armor Vendor, and everyone gets an extra four mitigation. Oh, and that's exactly the point I wanted to bring up with the Armor Vendor. Now, there's a thing that a lot of people want to do. They obviously get very tempted to go ahead and get that extra damage for themselves right off the bat. Armor Vendor is more of a helpline than a lifeline. Mm -hmm. You are, or excuse me, quite the opposite. It's more of a lifeline than a helpline. You don't want to utilize that right up front when you have full health. Because theoretically, if that Spirit Jailer comes down next turn, you draw those other, you know, you draw those next couple soul fragments, they're not going to go into use. You're going to have 30 health already. They're going to go to complete waste. You want to wait until you have a little bit of health off of you. It's only one, it's only one mana. So go ahead and use it later. Use it as more of like a turn topper in, in exchange for using it as a whole turn to allow yourself to get that health, to get something out of it. And I mean, whether or not it's two or three damage, as we saw in that last series, I mean, that two or three damage will add up and could theoretically save your life. Yeah, it's all about how you uh, how you use your resources. And Mick, one of my favorite things when I've been casting with you the entire time is you talk about resource management. It is such a heavy influence in this game. And if you throw all your resources at the beginning, it's kind of wasted at the end. So we go ahead and take a look. That's going to be Overlord uh, Runthark, com uh, Runthark coming out here on turn three and immediately starting to buff up all uh, five minions that is going to be so painful pie monster has to understand that he needs to get it out but i don't know what he can free admission used and he's gonna go ahead and try and draw two can't really get any turned down so mm. sasajiro hard stacking right now i gotta say i know it feels bad i i, I know it's not exactly the best <laughs> thing to think but i was <laughs> Oh, I was hoping, honestly, that he did pull a soul fragment that last turn to go ahead and prove my point. But, you know, it's all good. He will get some <laughs> heals down with, you know, going down to 25 health. It just I'm in the same shoes as you. It hurts at this stage in the game to really not have anything to work with. And I do like the Hysteria play on that Crab Rider because you use it on, you know, that 3-5. That's going to be two more buffs to every single one of their minions in hand. Saucer is going to have a lot more kind of stats to play with. And, that drain soul, I gotta say, it's interesting enough because if a soul fragment does come out this turn, but considering with that three damage coming down from the axe, knowing warriors can be a little bit more aggressive, that is a good trade overall. Only issue is at this stage in the game, a Talon's gotta come down, Envoy's gotta come down, Ogremancer, there's gotta be, Ogremancer almost feels like a void card in this matchup with how little spells that really warrior plays with so this is going to be interesting to see how exactly pie monster wants to play this out slow down the game and i gotta say armor vendor with talon easily the best play and i really love what i'm seeing here yep now uses that armor vendor to be able to you know give yourself a little buffer but remember yeah. the damage was done before you can see all these buffed up minions coming out sausage Hero literally throwing down four fives like it's nothing gets an extra copy and uh, is now going to go ahead quickly wipe that board right back out pie monster trying to stall for time but I mean, this is well over. Taking a look, that's 20 damage flat oh on the board. Oh my god. Back it up a little bit higher. Extra oh coming in. Oh, I, I think this is next turn lethal. <laughs> Pie Monster's got nothing. Oh, easily. What, what is I this? I think that's this may actually be it. 22. That is 26 damage flat on the board. Not even counting the extra 3, 12, 5, 8 in the pocket for Sasajiro. My gosh, and he hurts himself in it. <laughs> Yeah, I think he knew that his only real play there. I mean, you could have done a Drain Soul on that exactly right there. But that's still at this stage in the game with that 6-9, getting two more buffs next turn, getting another, you know, extra 1-1 one, one in staff for that second attack, and having that axe in hand as well. It's just, yeah, there's really nothing you can do at this stage. Sausage Euro with the crushing victory. And uh, as much as I had to say that, perfect health. Wasn't touched mm -hmm. once. The armor was the only thing broken. Sausage Euro played that to perfection now with the hunter and warrior out has to be able to win with that um i believe with uh i'm, I'm going crazy i swear Druid. it Druid, that's it yep my brain didn't want to work <laughs> jeez uh yeah druid coming out though and, and we've seen token druid have like off, uh, ups and downs right it's, it's mm -hmm. a very standard setup uh we've seen it over and over again but 
I mean, if you can't lay down the tokens, that's a whole thing, obviously. And so far, Sasajiro has got the draws, but maybe this is the time that Pie Monster gets the upper hand. Yeah, and I gotta say, Token Drew would definitely be the deck for Pie Monster to find some kind of way to come out on top here. Because with how ideal it is, with how kind of half and half it is looking at Token Drew and how, how it just plays out as a deck, that alone, you have to consider getting that starting hand, finding a way to curve and only having, you know, just alone this thorn growth, that's going to be the only real resource generation in hand so far, unless you're going to be waiting for turn five if you're in the shoes of Sausage Hero. And I mean, this exactly with it being so half and half, if the draws play to his favor, this game's over. If they don't, Pie Monster technically, I would believe with how kind of hit or miss Token Druid is, he's going to have himself another two games on his hand. Yeah, this could be a very interesting as we do see the Thorn Growth early secret, the Avenge coming out here, but needs a minion to activate. And again, Mancrick on turn two, draw here. Gonna be happy, probably gonna drop that down turn three. Uh, also has the Oh My Yog, which is pretty much the standard setup of the secrets for mm -hmm. uh, a Paladin here. So might want to drop that one down considering, of course, uh, that you know that the Glowfly Swarm is in there. And, and most of the time, if it's a slow start like this, I, I would hope you kind of assume that it's sitting on a token, right? You're already yeah. sitting on that, so why not play it? Yep, there it goes down. Uh, I'm starting to get the hang of this, Mick. I, I know you've been watching me and trying to and trying no, to see I'm, how I would honestly, do it. I got I'm it. proud, man. I'm proud. <laughs> I'm almost feel like a father in a sense, seeing how long, uh, how far you've come. I'm, I'm honored to see it and be a part of that journey, man. <laughs> there it is. The, oh my God, coming down, but it's hot on the spell that you want. Of course, the Solar Eclipse gets traded into a Freezing Trap, so uh, still relatively useful, but wow. of course, not having that double up, that was a huge point that he wanted to use. Bog Beam, Germination, and Celestial goes ahead and uh, picks up the Germination, so uh, going to probably play around a little bit with extra taunts just to keep that Mancrick and possibly angry Mancrick off. Yeah, I gotta say, I'm surprised it's alone of Sausagero not utilizing that Nature Studies right off the bat to go ahead and kind of linger out and get something out of that whole Oh My Yog, if that's what he suspected. But, I mean, looking in rear view, saying that you much rather kind of get that Solar Eclipse out, it's not as big of a deal for you because you don't have much to play with. That's a much better decision because Nature Studies can give you theoretically another copy of that to buff it out. So, uh, uh, overall, just looking at the way how great things are playing out right here, especially for Sausage here to get a free Divine Shield off of Mancrit. Only issue is there could have a second one in deck now with how that plays out. I'm just really having to consider what exactly Pie Monster could pull here to keep himself alive. Because looking at what Sausageira has on board, having that power of the wild, that's actually going to be a buff that is really meaningful compared to just a bunch of void cards right now. Yeah, not exactly what you want to be. Going to go ahead, throw down that solar eclipse into the fungal. Hmm. So interesting, just kind of card stacking here and drops yeah. off a lightning bloom. Uh, not fantastic, of course, but does have a hand set up with that Gibberling. That's going to be tossed out, unfortunately, of course, as a, you can't keep any minions. So unfortunately, the Gibberling will be let out of the cage and we'll see what Sausage does. Has uh, four glow flies and uh, two taunts. So just go straight for the head on attack. Uh, you know, unfortunate. Uh, the protectors can't really protect anything if you don't have a taunt up. So yeah, yeah just going to leave it at 15 health on Pie Monster. Having no taunts available to him, having oh. really nothing to play with is super concerning. I mean, that Rocket Og Merchant, that's going to be great to go ahead and clear out one of those Thorn Guards. But looking at all these Glowflies, you're going to leave three boards on the min uh, You're going to leave three minions on the board. You should have that pow up Power of the Wild to deal with, that Germination, another Glowfly, and a Prize Fury, Soul of the Forest. I mean, just letting this man get to the stage of the board, letting him play this kind of out this long, that alone just looks like this could spell demise for Pie Monster unless this secret triggers and gets himself a, a ton of some sort. Yeah, that's what you're praying for right now. And again, running down these secrets that he does have in hand, that's Noble Sacrifice, Avenge, and Galloping Savior. So decent amount. That's going to be the first one triggered. Noble Sacrifice drops another 2-1 on the board, Great but still just going to go straight for the attack, right? That's still going to be yeah. 8 damage flooded in. And uh, th I think he's going to be happy about that, wow. right? Dropping it. I think that's going to set him at 7. So Pie Monster really on his last rope. So I mean, Sasajiro has a perfect hand to come back, even if these three go down. 
Yeah, and I mean, having that hammer of Naru, that's also going to be a great advocate for this whole hand, just this whole player, giving him some kind of hope to tr hold on to. I mean, Conviction obviously looking pretty tempting right here, allowing yourself to try out these minions. I say go ahead and let the board kind of dwindle down a little bit. Go ahead, get that hammer Naru down, find a way to get yourself a ton on the board, and get yourself some damage to be putting onto face and pressuring Sausage Hero because it, he's just kind of bullying you right now, and you got to have some words to talk back to him because... I mean, otherwise your lunch money is looking like it's pretty much gone right now. He's gotten twenty three dollars out of your out of your thirty dollar wallet, and I mean you're you're about to be out, buddy. Yeah, this is and Pie Monster knows it, right? Yeah. He's he's stuck wondering, and you kind of have to sacrifice your leg to stay alive at this point. Hammer of the Naru going to be played down. Actually chooses to take the damage once again. He's done this once before, and I'm not sure if that's what he wants to do. I, I saw the arrow. Is he going to do it? Question mark all the way through. I uh, I'm I don't like this overall. I understand that he doesn't want to on the side, but you're putting yourself in such dangerous territory. Yeah, uh, I just I mean he does have the Alex Straza. I think he's hoping that they're just gonna last with that. But looking at how much minions Jeez, are gonna be yeah. flooding out right now, I mean goodness, there there's really nothing you can do about. That oh no, and the <laughs> I, I, I'm so sorry, but whenever I see that combination, you just like that, that you know you're wor you're working with two full boards. Yeah. And you're just like, what, what else can you do, right? You're sitting there questioning everything. And yes, you have a 6-6 six, six and a 3-4 taunt and might be able to buff up the Holy Elemental. So uh, again, getting some of those good draws. Unfortunately, the Oh My Yaw comes a little bit too late as all the spells have already gone down. Uh, oh my y'all could actually do something here this okay. this is one of these opportunities i know we said these decks were going to be pretty standard pretty bland overall something we're kind of used to but oh my y'all could actually bring something insane to the table depending on what mana cost that sausage Hero really decides to play maybe he wants hmm. to go ahead and bait it out leave another nature studies in hand and cost something like a termination that could go ahead and you know find a board clear of some sort for his side of the board yeah, well, the question mark, of course, if you're keeping track of all those secrets, uh, most of the secrets have already been played, right? Mm -hmm. And yeah, you're getting down to the minor numbers here, eight to three, which isn't bad. And uh, of course, the throne growth just has to come out here. Uh, we're taking a look here. I again, if Sasajiro has been counting, I think he should know that that is going to go ahead and be the last Oh My Yog out of the uh, out of the secrets that have been played thus far, right? Like that is that is kind of what I'm hope uh, that would be what Sasajiro is hoping for. Pie Monster, of course. Yeah playing on that fact that, hey, maybe he didn't keep track. There were a lot, I think three at once kind of tagged along each other. So he's gonna go ahead, drop the hero power, take a hit. Both these guys playing with heavy fire and there it is. I think he drew it out just right. Threw down a nature studies, not really worried and changes it to a brain. Oh, wow, that, that helps that, a little that bit. Sucks. That's but sucks. not enough. Yeah, this is a, uh, gonna go ahead, use the glow fly swarm. Swinging it out, uh, and I think that should be it. Sasajiro, 3 wow. 0. Man, Just short by two damage, man. That yeah. alone. I mean, considering, I mean, he's even probably uh, uh, looking back, Pie Monster's considering where exactly he could have done better. Mm -hmm. And just in that matchup, the way the draws came out, you know, doubling up solar, eclipsing that fungal. I mean, that alone. That, that's a lot of card draw. I, I didn't like to play at first, I'll completely admit. I mean, looking at having a Jibberling, having two of those in your deck, knowing that you could possibly draw those and waste two of those, instead of going ahead and getting those buffs of the power of the wild. But I gotta say, I like the way it played out, allowing himself more to play with. And I don't think I see a lot of players utilize, you know, fungal growth like that. I don't see them finding a way to get more card draw. I think they're very just, you know, I can go ahead and burn out my hand, I can win out the game, and who cares? Yep. But I do like the way that Sausagero, he was kind of in the situation where it's, this is finals, baby. I can't, I can't be caught. I can't throw all my eggs in one basket. I need to make sure I have a couple more little backup plans if it comes down to it. And pulling that solo forest, allowing himself, I mean, otherwise that would have been drawn maybe two turns later. I mean, even yeah. though that's when he played it, he didn't have to go ahead and allocate the three mana. That alone, that fungal growth could have sat there and been the one that got oh my yogged, and it could have been a lot more disastrous looking at it. So... I gotta say the way the thing played out, the way overall that Sausageiro played Token Druid to be a lot more slower, a lot more tempo rather than very aggro. Uh, I, I hate Token Druid, but I love the way he played it. Yeah, uh, it's not a fun one, right? It, it just mm. feels kind of like it, it's little, just little minions, of course, crawling across with all the tokens, and of course it just yep. busts up randomly to like four sixes, five five treants, and you're just like, come on, that's that's no real fun. But of yep. course that is gonna mean that he is gonna come out the winner in a pure three zero, uh, fifth seat toppling the odds right and just 
yeah. a fantastic job. And, and no hate to Pie Monster, seventh seed, making his way into the finals, making his way all the way through, crushing the competition, has to be given big props. So uh, again, congratulations to them. I mean, uh, I, I do want to ask, uh, was there, out of the three matches, was there one that you kind of saw was uh, played perfectly from Sausage One that you saw was like the deck to a T, never seen it cleaner. Rush Warrior. Hmm. I mean, I even said that off the beginning of the bat. I've never seen really anybody find a way to get those resources off, find a way to let them stick to the board and find a way to kind of finish a game out with it. I see all those stats come on the board. I find a lot of, you know, here, there, finding a lot of stats here and just not ever getting a chance to do it. And I think... That wasn't more, uh, and uh, often, honestly enough, as weird as it sounds, it's not even purely just from the way that Sausageiro played it. It's also from Pie Monster's draws. Sausageiro, he, I mean, his decks, uh, his draws weren't super immaculate, mm -hmm. but the way he played them were super clean. And only issue with that is Pie Monster just did not draw anything. I mean, we saw he had two armor vendors, a soul jailer. I mean, besides that, there was really nothing else played at all from him. And that alone just kind of hurts when you're playing Control Warrior because you're expecting by this stage of the game to say, okay, I have something to deal with this. And I think that really comes down to Mulligan, knowing when to sacrifice your you know, your curve and not exactly saying, okay, I need to turn one, turn two, saying, I can wait out two turns as long as I have an answer later on. And I don't think that was considered. Yeah, a little bit rough time. And of course, uh, that will go ahead and end it for this finals match. But we will go ahead, throw it over to the analyst with Jim Lowry and Jacob Van Ryn. Uh, and we will go ahead and do that after this very short ad break. Thank you so much for tuning in and stick around to see even more. What would you like today? Another Cloud 2 Classic? I'll stick with the usual. Maybe take a little bit off the sides. Oh, that's fresh. The HyperX Cloud 2 Wireless. Legendary comfort goes wireless. Hey, watch your head.
And we're back here looking at that last match. Sausajiro just did work in that one, Jacob. Uh, the 3-0 victory uh, against a good opponent. Sausajiro, his okay. deck seemed to just seem to favor the matchups there. Uh, had the perfect deck at the perfect time. And uh, sometimes that happens. Sometimes that happens in a game like Hearthstone. It's just the way the cards were dealt, I guess. No, um, it, it was it was uh, he, he played great, and 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 that just happens. And uh, like you said, good opponent. Um, I, I I like the matchup. I love that sort of five seven. That's a little bit different. You know, it wasn't just like oh one v two. I love that stuff. Um, we talked about the underdog story throughout this, um, throughout the course of these championships. But Sausagero definitely uh, got the job done tonight. We congratulate that. Yeah, I know Sausagero uh, playing playing really well there, uh, and more importantly. They got done early, which keeps us on time. This is the first time we've been running on time during <laughs> the finals. But no, Pie Monster, uh, sometimes there's nothing you can do. I've played enough uh, collectible card games in my time. Sometimes you just look at your hand, you know it's in your deck, and you go, well, this uh, isn't going to be a fun day. Uh, yeah. But, you know, Pie Monster played great all the way through the season just to get there. Uh, and, I mean, still played well tonight, just the, the deck did not favor them. I think Sausagero is in a, here in chat with us, though. Let's go. Uh, Sausagero, congratulations. Thank you. That was a fun series. <laughs> uh, first question, first question. Did you know during the ban match that your decks were going to roll that hard? Um, so something that I like to do before each round is go through each of my opponents, like, past decks that they played and then stare at the matchup spreadsheet and find a lineup that beats the decks that they play the most. So I went in there knowing I was going to likely win the Control Warrior matchup. Uh, not Control Warrior, Control Warlock. And I was really lucky <laughs> with that spell mage because my entire lineup had something like a 70% win rate against it or something something like that. Uh, <laughs> so I, I was feeling really, really comfortable going into that match. <laughs> So if you're Can listening I... at home, kids, if you're listening at home, math, keep going to math class. It's how you win Hearthstone. <laughs> <laughs> there was <laughs> there was a lot of spreadsheets involved in this tournament. <laughs> hey, Sasha Joe, let me ask you, first of all, congratulations, my friend. That was awesome. Um, Thank you. Let, let me ask you, when you see that happen and you feel so good, what's it, what's it do to your mental, right? I mean, how are you feeling? Like, it, it just sort of takes all that pressure off of competing in a championship situation, I would imagine. Oh, yes, it does. I was, um, of course, you couldn't see it at home, but I was popping off after each <laughs> win. <laughs> I, I, wish we, I wish we could have seen that. We, that would have been fun. <laughs> you know, but my, my opponent... Turn the webcam on. <laughs> Oh, my, my webcam's like under a, a bunch of drawers. But um, <laughs> <laughs> my opponent played well that match. Uh, like, don't get me wrong. Uh, it was more of an outdrafted kind of thing rather than a skill-based game. <laughs> well, and, and that's half the game. The deck build, the deck choices. Uh, half, if not more than half of the game. And it's a different skill set. The building of the decks, the the choosing of the decks, completely different skill set than the the mechanical play of the decks once you have cards in your hand. Yeah. <laughs> hey, so, uh, so Joe, let me ask you a question. Um, you got by, obviously, you get the win tonight um, in, in the championship game, but I want to go back to the semifinal round where you beat Bognast. You had an unbelievable regular season. He was the top seed. He was undefeated going into that one. Um, just walk me through what that did for your, you know, the confidence going into the championship when you get over as the five seed, you knock off the top seed, you got to be flying pretty high. Oh, oh yes. I was really happy with that. Um, and it was kind of the same thing where I scouted him for probably like a week beforehand, awesome. saw what he played a lot and came in with a matchup that, uh, well, with a lineup that just beat every single deck that he had ever played. Um, so basically it's either they need to switch up their decks when facing somebody like me, or it's, they're going to lose. Like I had a lot of three O's <laughs> during the actual tournament because of that. <laughs> bold, bold statement there. Oh, I love it. I love it. Calling I love out it. every opponent he's oh, faced. Now don't bold get me wrong. Statement. Plenty of times during the regular season, people would switch to something completely new. Like, uh, especially during the regular season match against bog nasty. I prepped an entire lineup for him and he came in with like three new decks and I, I couldn't, I couldn't beat it. <laughs> What was your favorite deck you played tonight? Uh, my favorite deck I played tonight was definitely the Rush Warrior. Um, I scrimmed with Nate Crusade, who was the other representative from PSU, for like two hours before uh, this match actually 
happens. And multiple games against that control warlock came down to Playmaker, Rokara, here's a Murloc. <laughs> and it's so satisfying to pull off. <laughs> oh, sure. Absolutely. 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 Jacob, I believe you have something here for Mr. Sasajiro. Uh, I do, my friend. Uh, we'll get this out to you. We'll get you the uh, the headset. We'll get you the shirt. But most importantly, congratulations on an NECC championship. Very proud of you, and it was awesome to watch. And uh, just a huge congratulations on behalf of all of our staff to you, our, our champion here tonight. Thank you so much. Um, uh, I will be at a different address because school's ending. Do you, uh, do you want me to <laughs> send that to any of you guys? Don't yeah, I'll reach out to you. Don't okay. say it over the air. We don't want people. So yeah, I'm not gonna. I'm not gonna say it on air. <laughs> if you if you want to send prize money to Sasajiro, feel free to send it to. Give him your address. Give him your address. No. no, no. Uh, give, him the, give him the Venmo. Give him the Venmo at info. All righty, that will take us to our next break before match number three. We're gonna be coming back with that one. I believe it's gonna be Mick and Ethan Dolan calling that one. Gotta be a fun one for the champions division. That's the what's coming up next right after this thank you what were you like today another cloud two classic I'll stick with the usual. Maybe take a little bit off the sides. Oh, that's fresh. The HyperX Cloud 2 Wireless. Legendary comfort goes wireless. Hey, watch it. 